for illumined life to be birthed into form. I am the truth. I am the life. Aloha, warmest welcome here again with me today in this video. It will be a beautiful sharing and I want to say no, I'm not in Hawaii, but um, today we found this um, almost like this plantation of stuff, of goodies for us. And I haven't been really up to exploring nature and landscape and the environment here because we were too busy with our physical 3D day-to-day -day life and errands and house related stuff. So, you know, it's very difficult for me because I need to know my surroundings. I need to expand myself through the life of nature because God is source, is the beauty of nature. God is life as we take it in. So I found this jasmine flower, you know, uh, it's called jasmine because it has the same fragrance scent as jasmine tea, which by the way, those of you who don't know, it's my favorite tea, absolutely. Uh, tiny balls, <laughs> dragon balls of heaven. So this fragrance is absolutely beautiful and I'll show you this beautiful blossom and uh, it will remain with me here um, I don't know how to put it maybe I should put it like a... together with my microphone <laughs> doesn't go somehow maybe huh what about like this so let's try let's try for the blossom to be with us to hold the space of the white goddess energy so I actually found my first <laughs> first <laughs> this year you know uh first wild strawberries they were pretty red and you know my fingers are red now too and usually you know i find these things through my environment knowing my environment very quickly so as you know i've been out and about for a year and then we finally anchored ourselves here and i still don't know the environment and i was just getting very upset with the divine i was saying you know it's not fair i don't get to eat my favorite wild strawberries this year because i don't know where they are where to go i don't have even time to search them out so god how god functions god is this beautiful spontaneous nature of life holy spirit breath of life and everything i always find i ever did spontaneously so i found these beautiful strawberries and then they led me to this bush <laughs> jasmine flowers and other finds uh saint john's worth again um last um what it's called Ugh. i'm just so out of it today you know when you make a fragrant beverage out of it my favorite root tree i mean i can't think of the name now you know um elder of course you know i am the elder too so i should know that um but anyway it's been a really beautiful energy coming through of the inner child finally merging with this um, the synergy with nature and i've been getting these messages through the cards as well these past few days and i actually recorded my first video when i moved here in the end of may on the same meadow which was full of white daffodils and i haven't posted that video because you know, I didn't have internet then for one month and then it was out of tune, it didn't align anymore. I don't know, it's still on my computer, you know, sitting there, just sitting there. I maybe posted on um, Patreon one day. I don't know, it's just out of tune, you know. I did have some powerful messages back then, but then it just, life moves you in a different direction. So sometimes that happens. Uh, but today I felt for the first time this liberated energy because it was so hard to do these breakthroughs. And this is something that I want to talk about today uh, because Source, the Spirit of Life, explained to us this illumination process that is a gradual process here on Earth for all of us who are in this path of ascension and ascending through our bodies, our beautiful physical vessels. And it's been like we've just been sitting there and in my last <laughs> nature retreat, sorry, there's flies here everywhere. <laughs> I don't eat them, right? have to be uh, watchful. So in my last nature retreat, I really unplugged for those two to three days. And there's something that shifted in me. And I told you it was about anchoring the beloved, the channel of spirit that always was with me and within me. I always had it, but through the transgression, somehow it was blocked. I felt like it was lost. It wasn't lost. It was just temporary put on hold and blocked through these frequencies. So today, 
source through what I'll share with you that was channeled for me today as we had our sitting sessions. We do them almost every day now as we can. Sometimes we have to go do something else. We don't have one, but we regularly have these sessions now holding space and getting information, but it's always so spontaneous. It's not like we ask questions. We just put a prayer and through that prayer guidance comes through and it's the most beautiful expanding nature of knowing ourselves as divine illumined children once again after everything that's happened after everything that's been done and how the goddess was transgressed and you know the regression i wanted to work through her this god is being the very essence of life right the holy spirit or the breath of life so i will explain to you an overview of what was challenged for me today we had a long session today it was about an hour you know we looked at the clock was like what this was an hour today Usually we start with the oracles, opening the collective energy, then we do a coffee cup reading, then we talk about it a while, then we do the prayer, and then the guidance comes through, and then at the end we would also look at the coffee cup. So it's a very beautiful process. Um, today in the coffee cup there was this Victoria's being doing like, whoa, you know, and I felt that was me, because I do feel like that. Um, so I want to explain this process first in relation to what God, um, the very nature of source is, how we are being ascended through. And this was my family of light speaking through me. They were speaking as the higher counterparts of us in this voice of union. And they kept reminding us that we're one. And I'll explain how this affects our ascension too. Then I'm going to mention some about the illumination of the body, how in a simplistic nature source showed it to us and my mother actually cried the whole time as I was channeling which was beautiful because at the end of the session I said I can't believe I got my, I got my channel back because for two years I couldn't really really get my channel it wasn't it wasn't pure it wasn't as crystalline as it was before you know before all this transgression happened and it was just magnificent and I was so happy I guess this was the woo I got it back and I got it back through my retreat and I knew I had to unplug and it was a very powerful energy the 7-7 gateway now we're going to be holding space until the 8-8-8 which will be an amazing portal of light this year I firmly believe it because I can feel it I think you do as well and and I also received a lot of messages today about the masculine process and I saw in the cards how the masculine energy is shifting and how and I even use my spirit tarot cards which are the most powerful cards I own um, and I'll share that in the extended Patreon video update too. And the next one I'll do mission updates, still waiting, pending. But this is something that came through and we already had two sessions in between or three, I don't know. But this one today was so profound. It was a long extensive channeling about the very nature of how we're actually ascending because you know there's these triggers in our outside world right and i had one just before we left for the chalk lake and that experience yesterday and because i had such issues with these workers and these denser types of energy that sometimes leave you on hook you know yeah like you have to wait for them and they don't contact you and then it would say yeah we'll do this and then they don't inform you and then they say well let's do this and then they don't call you and you're left pending you're like like you're hooked and you're waiting and that's for me the worst experience to experience because first of all I can't have my routine I can't do my spontaneous stuff because it always feels like I'm waiting for something and this for me is difficult because I'm a free spirit and I can't stand those energies so when that thing happened yesterday someone was supposed to come and they didn't and they already were late for an hour and a half and we're waiting and it's the morning and we want to go to the lake and we're like what the heck and then I get the message from the person you know after them saying they're going to be there in 15 minutes another 45 minutes past and then they say well I can't come because this worker fell off the I don't know the stand and so we need to go to the emergency now I'm like what and I felt this rush of emotion coming from my inner child saying you see you see that's exactly how my life is everything always is left unfinished you know the first worker already screwed us over then the second one will do the same and this and this and the owner of the house screwed us over because the house is not you know as it was first described and all these things are part of the physical world right these unpredictable scenarios so when the inner child is wounded what it does is creates these assumptions that things in your life are chosen as mistakes so what happens when you think about life as you know the ability of you making mistakes is you start doubting the very nature of your soul your soul calling and how your soul guides you which of course is a difficult process because the one main reason why we're actually sad and depressed in this realm is not because of others or something being done to us or whatever. It is because we feel we've lost the connection with our soul. So remember two years of being hijacked from my crystalline pure channel that was always intact, right? But in, in truth, what had happened through this experience, it only expanded. And now it can channel even more profoundly. It feels like now it's truly the voice of spirit and it's so unified and beautiful. I haven't been tuning into that way like this before. 
right? So I had this trigger yesterday, which in a way caused me to go in the wounded mode. And I felt almost like this, you know, this rush of emotion, emotion when it feels like a, a, ten, a temper tantrum, you know, when you're a child and you go like, ah, oh, and I had this few tears, you know, they were like um, vehement tears. They're not like those tears of sadness, you know, or when something really goes wrong. It was almost like that, oh, I never get it my way. You know, it never happens the way I want it. It's like that control being released. And then we sit there outside, like flushed like this. And suddenly I feel a rush of my spirit coming through. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, we're maybe uh, two hours late. Things didn't go by plan, but you know what? We won't let the darkness fool us and keep us here in this locked in prison mode. We're going, we just, did things really fast just <laughs> took some food and we just left and the moment we did that the energy instantly shifted right so today when i did the channeling something beautiful came through about this process right so what spirit started to unveil through me was a very simple explanation the reason why we have these triggered responses to our wounded inner child is because first and foremost right the souls to have been incarnate on earth for such a long time spirit of union said you know it is most natural for you to to respond this way to react to be reactive still because in the process of ascension when you think well i have a mental download i have an understanding of myself then naturally i have to respond the same way and you don't and god said the reason why this is so is because our cells in the body right the cells that hold density it's like particles that, that densified in order to give you form. The form in this realm, as we call 3D, as we know, during the process of ascension, is shifting, it's morphing, it's transfiguring. It's not just transforming and transmuting, it is literally transfiguring. That's the end, final, shape-shifting uh, result. It's a natural unfolding. So because we don't see this process and how gradual it is, we don't see that every single cell and the particle held within it has to gradually shift. And Source showed it to us today in this beautiful channel session. Um, I spoke very with peace. I speak very slow when I channel. You know, when I'm in my transmitting the information forward, I'm like, da -da 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 -da, and I get so excited. I speak from my merge self, my higher self through my human child, my, my physical human body expression. But when I channel, I channel directly that voice of spirit. It's always fast, um, it's always slowed down, it's not fast. Um, the voice softens and I feel like I'm, I'm the true spirit self, like my higher self presence. And it's unified with my lumen group and directly feeling source coming through. So source or the spirit of life was simply saying that this is so natural and we get so bombarded with energies and source simply said it is, you know, there is simply absolutely with full understanding the reason why you're being like reactive and, and this way instead of beautifully responding through love, which is the spirit of grace and union. It said it no wonder because you as a human what has been done to these human bodies through darkness through eons of time of physical human incarnations and those beings like myself who have our first and only lifetime here to come and assist there is no difference because even though we don't have karma directly through these you know soul incarnations and connections with others but we take upon all the karma of the ancestral lineage that was you know like before us and spirit of god said no no difference and like for example my mother who's a very very old ancient soul she had so many earthly lifetimes and through them she accepted also some of these denser energies and darkness is still kept in the in those cells it's still imprisoned so through these triggers we're liberating these codes that are, have been placed in our bodies through eons of time imagine that doing that work in one lifetime that is what ascension truly is and it said well for me as a light being coming directly through that direct incarnation that happened through transgression when darkness was put into me through these experiments and it wasn't just meant to experiment it was meant to bring out the spirit of total trust and surrender to the union with goddess because source truly as i explained in the beginning is the spirit of life so when we don't live our life like that spontaneously magically exploring nature wandering off you know being that fool the the awakened the um playful fool in tarot that aspect the awake fool is we're not really living life and in truth we're actually doing a disgrace to the very nature of god because god is life and if you don't live life fully you don't take it in you're not living god you're not living as a living god being presence within you you're living like this half discarnate entity almost just part of you feeling it's it's engaging with life a very dense frequency very filtered kind of way 
So when God spoke these words, it said literally, no wonder you explode like that. And no wonder these things are happening because these cells, every one of them gradually have to become illuminated. And you're doing that work through each trigger, each pulling out one part again is being liberated and free and that was the the coffee cup like going whoa when one part goes like woo the whole team does woo and one other important family of light message today was they said you know in those moments when you go off and you explode and that's what me and my mom sometimes we say you know what those of you up there the non-incarnate ones you don't know how difficult it is we are the ones living in these human bodies we are the ones you know what they replied to that they started channeling this today and they said you know when you say those things remember that every single pain you feel whatever you're going through we feel it in the same way it's just that we feel it almost like trans dimension we feel it like out of this dimension so they said you experience and you feel ca like captured in time that's we feel a sense of density and being with this being plugged into this anchored into this this dense mode or this frequency expression as it is right now and they said we experience all that you do beyond time they said it's a different experience but we still feel with you all the time it's like the the denser self or the incarnate self and the discarnate or the the light being self they both experience simultaneously so it's like this and through this quantum entanglement they're being held together and they were saying how important it is for us to have this compassion for ourselves and the others to accept this process because in truth this is the process of illumination and it's been lifetimes for many souls and it's been so much transgression in my own life that most people don't understand what transgression is if you're not like me going half bald and being electrocuted and having chronic pain as a result of that and never were sick in your life before you don't know what transgression is because a lot of people come to me and they say, well, I've been transgressed too. Ah, there's been transgression in my life. They started using the word after I first, you know, exposed this word. And I started talking about this phenomena. But this is not happening with everyone, my beloved. These were direct experimentations. You know, if you haven't woken up in the middle of the dream state as I did in my sleep, caught those beings doing that through you. And it almost, like I explained, they almost rippled me out in, through the stargate. I literally went I almost was totally discarnate and died because of that and I just I don't know how I managed to come back into body but I did there were twice these experience when I woke up this was the hardest thing for me to experience and I saw these energies going through my body I literally felt them and there was nothing I could do I was like tied if you haven't had that you probably didn't have transgression you know and you don't know what it is so when people tell me about these things like oh there was transgression i was transgressed through no no my beloved not everyone was experimented on like i was because you're not interesting if you're not on a on a such a mission quest that light beings are this usually happens with very very specific few individuals in a way that it happened to me it's still very selective because you have to know even darkness it don't it doesn't waste time with just everything it's very selective in what and how it does it doesn't waste time and it's resources for them you know they consider their input needing to be done wisely so people confuse what i talk about as transgression and normal or regular symptoms of ascension because you're ascending you're breaking free from denser energy so you're having challenges because each path of ascension has its challenges and then people start repeating after me because you know that's what people do they learn through mimicking the reflection of the other and let me tell you most people they do not experience what i did but i have to talk about it because it's a galactic phenomena it doesn't just happen on earth right and what these beings that have basically fallen members of the light family that were originating from the same core as already explained so don't just use that word lightly i was transgressed i had transgression in my life too no 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 transgression is literally playing with your body taking it as it's it belongs to them using it as their conduit they can do whatever they want with it it's literally um, an act of experimentation with very intense frequencies that most human bodies wouldn't handle even um, Jesus the Christ at that time he explained he said if I didn't have the assistance that I did and through the Arcturian collective he said I would literally die and most people don't have that backup backup that I have because they don't have that kind of same mission and most human bodies if they experience what i did they would die so please my beloveds take this as don't compare and don't wish to be transgressed because i wouldn't wish that upon anyone i wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy by the way it's living hell and i still didn't explain in most cases like what i experienced this winter there were levels of fear leaving my body as i was 
when the surges went out, they were put in. I have never experienced such fear. I never felt fear in my life, but this fear, this was the most primordial fear that you can't imagine. It was like heart rushes. Like I felt like I'm being sucked out of my own body. Like I'm going to die in an instant. This is the transgression fear. It has nothing to do with the fear that most humans experience, like getting out of the comfort zone, that kind of fear. This is like you being in, in direct contact with like the darkest force you can be. And most people in their humble human lives will not get that close. And I don't wish for them to. And it's not meant for them to because we experience at the level of our own experience and how advanced we are as a being. So please don't use that term like transgression lightly. Not everyone has been transgressed, but everyone is who is ascending, experiencing ascension challenges. The reason why I was transgressed is because I'm such a vital key to this ascension process and assisting so many souls who are ascending so that I couldn't do my work. So I couldn't finish my work. So my body was taken as, oh, let's just take it. And, you know, and, you know, I'm coming out as, you know, a, a bunny rabbit entering out of the lab and it just survived. Oh, there it is. It survived, but it has all these issues and consequences still. It's not the same. The poor little bunny is no longer the same, and you know. But what Jesus explained to me in yesterday's channel session, he said, beings who are truly light beings who have all the capabilities, and I'll go further with that into mission update, he said they have the power to really change their bodies, no matter what was done to them. And this was the challenge that Aurea took in through my her incarnate self. But let me tell you this seeing our body ascending gradually it's like each cell is victorious the whole will feel it because you know our cells are part of the morphogenetic field so the whole, whole field will shift it's almost like you know when you have souls it, it's just an analogous with the perspective of souls ascending you would have someone really stumbling like far ahead and you can't directly assist them but what you can do you hold the space for the whole for the group and then literally those who are maybe a bit far ahead they take a few steps further and then because it's a collective thing they would also push the one who would say oh we would say oh it's the last standing one they're really resistant they, they can't they're kind of the, the, the last remaining dark one the light does not function in a way oh let's go save that one who's here behind the family of light has a very divinely intelligent method the way life force is used to distribute these discharges these dispensations of light so they would go and they would hold the light collectively that it was says, it says those who are ready they would be pulled and then the next last standing ones just just a little um behind them they will get a little further ahead too and until we get to the last standing one or the most resisting one of our family members that need to ascend because it was their soul agreement we would keep on doing this dance it's like um it's like um wagons right train wagons being little by little pushing ahead and this is till we reach the last one so that how i was explain this process today in this channel session when the family of light came through they said you always need to know that we're one right as i explained they exist out of time we exist now but they also explained to us um this vision of us feeling that because the inner child is wounded right in my example this shows as i never got anything good or quality i always get the the best um the last best thing which means things that are the uh, used and not good you know even i always had old cars but for me i don't mind because i like to have my cars being rugged so if i do something in nature to them it's like eh, well whatever it's an old car i don't i don't need that burden of a new car on my mission it's just it will be a burden for me you know like every single scratch oh no you know i'm not supposed to worry about these physical things in the nature of my purpose and where i'm headed so i'm not dealing with materialistic things but either way you know there's a part of me it's like oh why why do i have to live in a house that has all these scrapes and people have been ruining it because you know all these people they've been living there and they haven't been investing and now it's ugly and these things are there and i, I can't fix them all at once and it's piling up god said today in the session you know when the child is wounded it thinks of things like that but think of things shifting just like your body every cell shifting gradually is the same in the outer world things will gradually shift not everything can be done at once and god said trust that whatever is important god will give you as an advantage so maybe something will not be handled or um you know solved that you think it needs to be done now because it's something of a disturbance to you or it's causing you a bit of the ah you know i need it to be done for me to enjoy life god said no but god will always provide for that which is needed so that happened for us recently because we had an animal coming on a roof you know and the roof is not properly shielded or you know it doesn't have the lid cover everywhere because it's an older house um it's cute but you know it has its 
anomalies, how we, how we would say. And so we're like, oh no, do we need to do like the dropping of the roof? Like, what should we do? But then my mother gets this idea, no, no, we need to start with, with the attic because that needs to be done first. So I put this offering online because there's these companies then contacting you. So you're like, I'm just putting the offer what I need and let them contact me. And most of you get these emails and contacts. But there was this person we left to, to the lake and the person just called us and they said, you know, if you have this issue, you need to start with the roof, with the attic. And we're like, that's exactly the kind of person that we need. Like, when can you come to look at our stuff? He's like, tomorrow, you know, which is today. By the way, I'm running late and we need to go meet up. But I'm just saying that when God knows what's important, sometimes the things you, you think they need to be handled in a the moment, they won't. But then something else needs to be handled. So this is how God works. The same analogy first happens with our body. It's the alchemy of light source being moved through our body. And sometimes, you know, even with these discharges that I have to do and being liberated, you know, the energy goes somewhere and then that supportive system becomes another supportive system to that which needs more support and that's how things work i explain it at the collective soul process too it can be replicated to every single thing because it's the same process right it's that which is most resistant will eventually be pulled too but we start with that which is most needed and god said we're starting at the roof now okay this is the most important for you because this animal right was causing noise and we were getting afraid and then one day we say but why are we even afraid it's not going to come and add us you know it's probably a tiny creature but it causes noise you know and we don't want that and it's it's obnoxious because you don't sleep well at night and sometimes it bangs really loud and it wakes you up like Pfft. you know something on the roof wakes you up and it's not really pleasant because then I didn't have a few nights of good sleep and then it affects me right and my body and the changes I was supposed to be going through and the work of body illumination I was supposed to be doing so it was really obnoxious and sometimes it's difficult for me to hold now the space in between the physical realm which it needs to be handled and this light work that I need to be doing on myself so it's all becoming a little bit too much sometimes and this is what God said just understand that it's all being handled and, and you need to know one rule though you know sometimes when things stop and you feel there's a halt and a blockage and you, you can't you can push through that's when you have to step aside and we've done it twice now we're starting to react more consciously with darkness now um not taking it so much as it's pushing you towards the edge and you feel oh i have no other choices left because that's what darkness is doing it gives you in the space of complacency in which you feel you have no other choices left and if this doesn't happen then you're running out of it no, in that moment you have to retreat, you have to withdraw. That's when God is at play, that's when God is at work. That literally happened for us, right? We went away, we get the call. Oh, right. Mm. One person didn't come. That person didn't probably wasn't meant to do that for us because it's not a good choice. Sometimes that happens. Something doesn't happen, it's not the right person, sometimes it's not the right time or the right circumstance. But either way, you have to go with the flow. Because a lot of the things we feel that are darkness created, the light works through them. The last thing I want to share today, because I was picking these strawberries today, something hit me because that person who didn't come sent me a message and it was this on and off communication. And I was getting, oh, this person always does that because they're, you know, and I go in my mind, of course, because they're of lesser consciousness and they don't know how to, you know, respectfully and simply communicate so things could get done. And this is why that happens. You know, when you get triggered by the dark and we use these you know when these things like workers and so right we say they're lesser consciousness and they don't know and you get entangled with them and it's a denser energy and you get upset so it affects us right so we're getting triggered by the dark we start acting like the dark this is the last but probably most important thing today this is how we then affect the world that god wants to talk about is we have to treat every single energy expression as divine so when a worker or someone that someone that bugs you in that moment, let's just say, you feel like, oh, is darkness playing with me? Yes, perhaps. But you have to know that we are now needing to step into our creative roles, into being creator in our bodies. It is not our role to feel um, defeated by the dark no longer. That was then. This is now. It is our role to constantly keep the status high, which means return to your sense of sourcehood. You are God. What does God do? God sees every living creature, every single thing, every situation as an opportunity for growth and expansion and to be in that respectful communication. So even though you might not get it from another, you get to still be in that mode of respect, right? So when you can hold this space, you have to start acting to these energies that you would say, oh, these muggles, why do they act like this? And you start judging them in that moment we all do that because we get triggered by the dark through our bodies aspects of our body that are not yet illuminating right they're not yet illuminated they react from the dense state and that's why god said you're not ascended yet that's why you are ascending 
That's what it's called physical ascension. It's, it's morphing gradually. And that's why we're all still here because we're still doing the process. And we're different levels of it, but it doesn't matter. We're all in the processing. So we start responding this way, like <laughs> God said, no. Treat them, send them this love, see them as an equally divine. You're equal, even though they're not expressing it yet. You won't then get to change the person. They still are where they are. They're still an energy and their type of consciousness. But you will step in your role as a creator and you will demand, not like by judging and demanding through judgment, but you will demand by getting into the self affirmative mode, the source as creator being, and you will basically get that respect back, at least in that tiny mode of, of something shifting the energy. This is how we shift the energy. This is how we affect the world. We shift the world by getting into our source nature, getting into our true power. Our true power is pure grace, pure compassion, pure love, right? And we use the element of light to distribute the intelligence that is life force through every single aspect of our life, everything that we're creating, everything that we're part of, creating this experience that is the ascending human being. We're no longer trapped in specific density, no longer trapped in um, codependent um, mutual relationships that are basically just to fulfill our ego or lesser needs to survive and feel safety. But we're shifting, we're morphing into these beautiful divine beings that always have the freedom to choose, responsibility for our choices, right? We need to know that and returning to God, to our source of power being the creator create tricks instead of just someone who's a pawn you know and i often find myself saying these things describing these lesser energies because i'm in this defensive mode that's what god doesn't want us to be in this defensive mode towards the world and that's when i need to like breathe and through that breath oh i will expand so beautifully right when the animal was hitting at us we said you know even though that's that let's sit in this space and let's breathe and meditate and we release so much fear just by breathing and we were expanding our field through that breath and it was amazing and today i was picking the strawberries and i said to my mother you know this guy this this assistant this worker i said let's just send him this that's okay, we love you. We see you as an as intelligent being, even though they're not acting in this moment as, but that will change things. It will change your reality. It won't change them as a person, but it will bring a different energy. And if no other way, it will make them fall off and another one comes or something like that. You defend, defend, um, you don't defend yourself, but you affirm yourself. And uh, instead of being defensive with the world and getting that kind of energy, you're just attracting more of that. You're affirming, no, I, I, I deserve respect. I am respect because I am respect. And even though the trigger comes and you're acting less than through the trigger, you, you have to go back, pull back and say, whoa, that's not me. I'm not going to act defensively anymore. Whether it's through relationships with people you love, but somehow they're hard relationships for you, they trigger you. Whether it's through these lesser energetic expressions that are still a part of our 3D matrix world, or just with yourself, same way, same principles apply always returning back to our source of power that is our sourcehood it's our divinity it's our creatorship creatrix nature divine mother and father within through god and the christ and christ and men women <laughs> same thing it's not gender specific we get to apply ourselves and that's how we're sending through our body with each changed action within another cell in our in our body another component of what makes the body what it is holding density in this specific way will shift it and that's why ascension is a gradual process. We don't ascend, oh, with, with our thoughts. Oh, I'm so conscious of everything. I'm going to ascend in this life. Well, it's really a gradual process for each and every one of us. And my solemn goal in this life is to be fully liberated as a divine goddess incarnation. And God is simply meaning the principle of life itself. The life through me, when it is experienced, when it runs through, it's free. It's magnetic. I pull things in. I don't have to fight for things. I don't have to defend myself. I'm just loving and I'm being affirmative in the way I love, but I'm also being compassionate in the way I love. It's masculine and feminine components of the Christ love and experience of that love as a human. So um, this is in a nutshell illumination of our body explained. I will go much deeper in our this month. I know I'm running late, but it is what it is. I'm running late now too for our meeting. So I have to leave you with that. I'll do a short mission update and a more extended one on Patreon. Those of you who ever want to join me, even if it's summer, we're always working. I am. Um, I'll see you next time and take good care of yourself. As always, so much love is in power and bye for now.